Hi guys, welcome to another Protopie video. And in this video, I'm going to show you a relatively new feature that's been added to the Protopie Figma plugin, which is this ability to export as flattened. And what this means is that we can now take whole chunks of our Figma designs, which are made up of many frames, and we can flatten them all down into one PNG image. And this is really useful for quick, hacky, rapid prototyping especially when you've got certain sections of your design you just don't need to interact with. We're gonna take that idea and we're gonna to put together a very basic prototype of this streaming app. And then on top of that in Protopie, we're gonna add an interactive hotspot, which allows us to take sections of our flat PNGs and add interactivity to them, okay? So without further ado, let's get into that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some of the quirks and just things you need to know about the plugin part of, of this kind of thing as we go along. Okay, so I've got this home screen here. So I'm gonna to start to construct this. And I've got Protopie running over here in the background. Just got like an empty fire all set up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to come down and I wanna kind of bring in this, this kind of hero carousel. So I'm going to select my hero carousel square here. I'm going to export as flattened. That's going to bring that into Protopie. And immediately you can see we've got a problem. It's only exported the part of the carousel that was visible. And this is probably one of the kind of like first mini gotchas that you need to know is that when you're exporting as flattened, you need to make sure in Figma that the, that the Protopie plugin can see all of your designs. So on this particular frame, I've got clip content um, selected here. So I'm just gonna unselect that. And that means that the, the plugin can now see all of my frames. If I come back now to this hero carousel square and I hit export as flattened again, give it a few seconds, it now brings in the whole thing. So I've got the whole, the whole square here. Okay, so I'm kind of wrap this in a group. I can kind of add some scrolling to it or some paging to it. And I just need to reduce the, the bounding box here to make the kind of paging work. We can open up preview here. And we've got a kind of very basic carousel working. Okay, so that's just one flattened image. It's very quick, it's very lean. We've only got one PNG in here. Okay, so that's the first bit. Let's go back. I'm gonna bring in my tab bar. It's gonna export that as flattened. That's literally gonna slot into place. That's all ready to go. And I'm gonna bring in this up next carousel item and I'm actually gonna bring it in in two parts because I want the carousel images to move but I don't want the title to move. So I'm just gonna bring in the title first. I'm gonna put that into place. For some reason, when you bring things in, they come in the right place and some reason, sometimes they don't come in the right place. Don't really know why. Um, maybe it's um, where they are inside the frames. Okay, and the next bit I want is the actual carousel. So I'm gonna export as flattened again, bring my carousel in. I'm just gonna place that roughly in place. And again, I'm going to group that, change the bounding box. Let's call this up next. And I'm just gonna add some scrolling this time to it. And then we've got our preview open here. So just make sure that's kind of working. So there we go. So we've got a scrolling carousel and we've got a paging carousel. Okay, so let me just rename this hero. Okay, next up, I want to actually bring in some of the detail views. So I wanna be able to tap on this last samurai image and I wanna bring in the detail view of that and I also wanna make this edit button work. So I'm gonna come back to Figma, just gonna grab those views. So I've got my up next view here. I'm going to bring exports flattened. And I'm just going to, I'm going to have that kind of coming up from the bottom. So I'm just going to stick that down there. I'm actually going to group it. because I'm going to add something to it later. Call this overlay. And kind of come back here. I'm going to get my detail view. Again, export as flattened. And I think this one I'm just going to stick over to the right hand side. We'll have this coming in, coming in from the, from the right. Now, one thing I want to draw your attention to is the resolution of these PNGs. 
So you'll see they're actually quite nicely, I mean, obviously not if you blow them up, but they're kind of the right resolution. And that's because the plugin is taking into account the density that your protopy file is set to. So as long as your protopy file is set to 2x or 3x, you're gonna get you know, a nice clear image. If you set it to 1x, you're gonna get a kind of blurry image. Okay, so we've got everything in place. Let me just group this detail view. We'll call this detail. And we've got everything kind of set up. Okay, so in the next section, I'm going to show you how we do the hotspot and how we kind of add the interactivity. So I'm going to come up to the shape menu. I'm going to choose a rectangle. It's going to draw a rectangle. It doesn't really matter what size or color it is. We're going to make that a component. And we're going to open this up. We're going to call this overlay. Sorry, not. We're going to call this hotspot. And this is going to be our hotspot component. We're going to delete that rectangle. We don't need it. We just want the frame. And we're going to come over to fill. And I'm just going to choose a color that's going to really stick out. So let's kind of pink color. And I'm going to set the, um, the fill to 30. So it's got a 30% fill. Okay, so what we want to do, I don't know if you remember some of the older apps where you'd be able to add these hotspots and you get this kind of translute pinky look. In fact, let's just kind of come back and you can see it's here. I'm going to add it to my edit menu button. So we want to make that kind of work. I'm just going to call this hotspot one. So obviously if we open preview here, you can see that we can see it. And we don't want to see it when it's running, but we do want to see it when we're editing. So we're going to come back into the hotspot component. We're going to add a really simple start trigger and a color response. And we're going to choose our hotspot kind of root element. And we're going to change the fill opacity to zero. We're going to take off the duration. We don't want any animation on it. And we're going to come back to the scene. So now when we open up preview, you can see that it's gone. Okay, so that kind of covers the hotspot showing and hiding thing. One thing to note with that, and the reason why it's still going to work, is because if I select this hotspot here, when we go into preview mode, we're actually reducing the fill opacity of the color of the, of the object, but we're not reducing the opacity of the object itself. As long as the object has 100% opacity, it's still going to be tappable. If we had actually reduced the opacity of the whole object to zero, then you wouldn't be able to tap it. So it's important to know that we need to just reduce the color opacity, not the object opacity. Okay, so we've got this, this kind of hotspot here. We're going to select it, add a tap trigger. So we've got that selected and we're going to find our up next. So that's called overlay. Going to add a move response, find our overlay, and we're going to move it to a Y position of zero. So open up preview. And when we tap it, we can see we've now got our up next open. We've got this other close button here. So we want to add a hotspot to that as well. So let's come down. So here, this is why I grouped it, so we can actually add a hotspot inside, inside of our overlay. We're gonna make it a little bit smaller. You can see how this is really quick to do. And again, with that selected, we're gonna add another tap trigger. And we're actually gonna add a reset response here. This will basically reverse the animation that we just added. We're gonna re reset the overlay. Make sure you choose the right object. And we're gonna name this hotspot two so we don't get confused. And then there's kind of, see that working in preview. So again, I'm gonna open and I'm gonna close. Okay, so that's good. We'll do our final, our final view. So we got this warrior. Now we're gonna add a, another hotspot here inside this up next carousel. Stick that here. I'm gonna make it whatever size we need to make it. Again, with it selected, add a tap trigger. And we're going to find this detail view. And we're going to move this, this time to an X of zero. 
and let's try that out. So I'm going to tap Last Samurai. Okay, so we can see that's not working. Let me just check that. Hotspot 3. Ah, chose the wrong thing. So we need to obviously choose Hotspot 3. Let's try that. Okay, so you can see that's now working. Obviously in this design, I seem to have forgotten to put a back button here, but we can put like a hotspot on that for now. Just so we can get back. And again, we're going to have to, yeah, we've got, we've got it already grouped, that's fine. I thought we hadn't grouped it. Put the hotspot inside. We'll put this roughly in the top left-hand corner. Add a tap trigger. And again, we're going to add a reset. So when we tap hotspot four, we're going to reset the detail view. Come over to preview, open, close, open, close. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. So hopefully you can see how we can very, very quickly, rapidly prototype some of our Figma designs without bringing in all of the frames and all of the all the different bits that you get in, you get in Figma when you do export norm in the normal way from Figma to Protopie. So do think about how you might be able to use this feature to make just make your life easier. Sometimes when you bring in all of those frames into Protopie from Figma, not only does it take a really long time, it can make your Protopie files very big. It adds a lot of complexity over in the layers panel. It adds a lot of things you have to kind of pick through. You obviously need to make sure your layers are, are named and it can, it can kind of make, it can make things a little bit confusing. So this way, if you're just doing some really quick things and you don't need to have everything in there with interactivity and you can put your designs together fairly quickly the way I have, I have here, then maybe this will be a good strategy for you. Okay. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.